Hello, thank you for watching this recording titled, Are You Original? A workshop on preemption checking. I'm your librarian, Dr. Britt Hunter, and academic research and scholarship is absolutely my favorite thing. So I'm really excited to share these tips for you. Our goals in this workshop include learning some basic methods for developing a paper topic, understanding the importance of preemption checking, uh, and when you should prioritize it identifying sources to use as you conduct your preemption research, thinking about what to do if your topic has unfortunately been preempted by law or by author, and finally, locating helpful resources at the FSU Research Center. Before you can check preemption, you'll need a research topic. And the most common scenario in which you'll be writing a research paper as a law student is for your upper level writing courses. But that doesn't mean that this is a no-stakes homework assignment. Even now, as students, you're part of the legal field and can make meaningful contributions to legal scholarship by revising your research into a publishable law review note, a journal article, or some other form of public-facing scholarship. So you should take this opportunity seriously. My first advice is to think about the topics or debates that really interest you about the type of law that you want to practice, and you should read at least a handful of sources on that, uh, just to get your ideas flowing. Be sure to look through current awareness sources like legal news on blogs or podcasts and newsletters from places like the ABA or the Florida Bar Association. Um, and this is to help make sure that you are up to date on the most recent issues in your area of interest. This is also a great place to start if you're having trouble developing a research topic or you aren't really sure what exactly you're that interested in. While you're doing some light reading on your preliminary topic through news or introductory sources, uh, don't forget to refer to your course materials too. Was there a case or an article that stood out to you as particularly intriguing? Did your professor mention something that you've been thinking about and you know might make a good research topic? Not only should your paper be relevant to your course, but it should also be grounded in some type of legal debate, and these are great places to start. Don't forget to set up alerts through Google or legal databases so that you can continue to monitor the subject of your paper throughout the research and writing process. This will be especially useful to check for preemption as I'll demonstrate in a few slides, but you'll wanna start doing this even before you develop your specific thesis. Finally, when you're developing and refining your research topic, I suggest that you think about your audience. I mean, your audience outside of your professor. Think about the different academic, industry, or government fields that intersect with your work. Not only will this help you think about databases uh, and journals to consult during your research, but it'll also help you think about what's at stake for your research and what methodologies or type of evidence should you consider uh, to make the most convincing argument possible. By the way, don't feel shy about asking your professors, your summer job or internship supervisors, uh, or of course your librarians for help. That's what they're all there for. Um, here is a list of some common research frameworks that might help you refine your topic of interest into a good research topic with space for you to make an original contributing argument. These prompts and frameworks should help you think about the internal organization of your paper, what type of supporting evidence is important, uh, what your rationale and contribution are, and how your thesis might develop during the process. So to summarize the research process, your um, paper topic should be based on your area of interest, and you should familiarize yourself with current debate, debates and developments. Once you have a research topic percolating, you'll want to do some initial background research to make sure that you have the full context of the legal issues at stake and feel comfortable with the relevant area or areas of law. This is a good time to consult introductory sources like nutshells, hornbooks, and commentaries. This is also a good time to start honing your paper's thesis and write down questions that you'll seek to answer throughout your paper. As your ideas come together, you'll move into more focused research in primary and secondary sources to put together your arsenal of supporting evidence. 
Remember that your research and um, paper and as you develop your ideas will likely have to change throughout the process. So you'll probably go back and forth between background and focused research. And you might even have to revise your tentative thesis or even your whole topic. So amid all of this researching, what exactly is the time that you need to check for preemption? The short answer is continually. Throughout this whole process, from the first glimmer of a thesis seedling to the final stages of writing and revising, you should continually keep an eye out for your topic being preempted. Which begs the question, what exactly is preemption? In terms of scholarly writing, preemption is when your unique argument or contribution has been taken or overruled by another scholar. Um, it could also be overruled by a passage of legislation or a court decision, which would render your arguments moot. It's vital to do thorough research to make sure that what you think is your original and unique idea hasn't already been written or resolved somewhere else. Another way to think of preemption in your writing and research is to compare it to the legal doc doctrine of preemption from the Constitutional Supremacy Clause, which states that a federal law is superseded or supplanted, um, or a federal law can supersede or supplant any inconsistent state law or regulation. In this analogy, your tentative thesis would be mooted when a higher authority, quote unquote, like a published work or a settled law renders your thesis inconsequential. So before you do a significant amount of writing, uh, it's crucial to make sure that your paper relies on current law and current legal debates, um, which are, as you're writing, unresolved. And so therefore your ideas are completely your own and they're really important and relevant. This pressure to be original probably seems unrealistic, but keep in mind that your paper topic doesn't have to be entirely original. You don't have to come up with a brand new topic that no one's ever written about or talked about before. Just your argument or the way that you approach the, atop the topic needs to be original. Think about this as a new or a novel way of addressing an issue or solving a problem. Um, but be warned, to quote the Georgetown Law Review guidance, uh, the hotter the topic, the greater the potential for preemption. So if you're dealing with something that's the biggest, you know, most flashy news story that you keep seeing on all the legal newsletters, um, there's a probability that other people are also focusing on that. For example, if I'm writing a paper on the fair use doctrine of US copyright law, and my unique argument is maybe some novel interpretation of what makes a work transformative, um, it might be dangerous to hinge my argument entirely on the Warhol v. Goldsmith case because it's currently being decided by the Supreme Court. Not only is this a very hot topic, but my paper is also in serious danger of being preempted once the decision is made. Oh, and always cite your sources. So to ensure that your paper topic is original and a valid issue of law, you should regularly check in with the following sources through the paper writing and researching and rewriting process. You should check primary law, secondary legal literature, non-legal scholarship, forthcoming publications from legal and non-legal scholars, and current awareness sources. And although I organized this list in order of legal authority uh, from binding to not very persuasive at all, uh, remember that they're all important to look at when checking for preemption. And the remainder of this workshop will actually cover quickly um, these individual types of sources. The first one, primary law, uh, should be very familiar to you and you should be developing a good comfortability as law students with uh, researching primary law. If your topic focuses on a circuit split or the impact of a set of specific regulations, for example, um, you will absolutely need to use all of Westlaw, Lexis, and Bloomberg to search for relevant laws and ensure that the problem your paper is trying to solve is actually still a problem. If you haven't already, you should develop a familiarity with citators. 
key site, Shepherds and B site, are useful for um, are used by the big three legal databases. And don't be alarmed if you see a flag or a symbol pop up on a case that you're working on. All of these citators have keys that explain things like negative treatment or superseding decisions, so be sure to read them carefully before throwing out all of your research. For example, my Warhol v. Goldsmith case that I mentioned earlier is marked for negative treatment in Westlaw, but positive treatment in Lexis. This is just because the writ of cert was granted and a superseding decision is imminent, but it's interesting to see how the different citators react differently. And that's because these are edited by human beings. So don't you know, see a yellow flag and freak out. So when your thesis is strongly dependent on one law, you may find that it's overturned or amended as you research, write, and revise your topic. Um, and this would mean that your paper has been preempted by law. To avoid this pitfall, revise your paper's scope, uh, or revise the issue you seek to address, or change your argument and the evidence that you use to make it so that you're still making a valuable contribution to scholarship. Moving on, let's look at uh, key secondary sources to check for preemption by author, which is when your exact topic or argument has already been covered in a law review or a journal. You should check all of the big three databases again for secondary sources, uh, starting with law reviews and journals. But remember to also look for ALR annotations on developing issues surrounding your topic. Not only are these great resources to find additional primary and secondary scholarship, but they're unlikely to preempt your topic completely, and instead they often provide very good background and focused research. And don't forget Hein Online is another great legal database. It's a massive database that contains plenty of primary law and secondary sources, and provides numerous different collections to search within. It's especially excellent for historical materials. So if that's part of your methodology or approach, be sure to use Hein Online. In addition to journal and article databases, don't forget to use the library catalog to find treatises on your legal topic or the field that your topic relates to. Although the scope of treatises are much larger than your research paper, discrete chapters or subchapters might have already made the argument that you plan on making. So they're also an important place to check for preemption, as well as being a great source for building your knowledge. If an argument in a legal treatise doesn't preempt your unique topic, then make sure to cite it and any supporting evidence in your paper. Um, and be sure to chase uh, footnotes or endnotes. If you find something that's really relevant, look at those endnotes and footnotes and see what the author is citing and be sure to follow up with those sources. This is another way to check for preemption and it's also just a really good smart way to do research. If an argument in a legal treatise doesn't preempt your topic, make sure that you cite it. Not only are these books available on the library catalog, but ebook versions can often be found on Westlaw, Lexis, and other legal databases. To use the advanced search interface of the library catalog, go straight to lib.fsu.edu. And in addition to treatises and monographs, the catalog will find articles and news as well. And if you select the statewide catalog search at the top of the advanced interface, uh, then you can request ma materials from other Florida libraries and institutions through the statewide UBORO interlibrary lending service after you sign in with your FSU credentials. In addition to secondary legal sources, you'll also want to research non-legal publications since most law topics intersect with other academic and professional fields. It's possible that an interdisciplinary publication that you might have missed on Westlaw or Lexis is actually preempting your topic and thesis as well. Again, the library catalog is a great place to start searching for interdisciplinary research, as is Google Scholar, which is a super valuable and free resource, and it uses Google's powerful algorithms and search engines to navigate uh, to to 
um, search for free and subscription databases, as well as Google Books and other online collections. Use the navigation menu at the top left corner and locate the advanced search uh, to use terms and connectors or advanced search features. And when you use Google Scholar on FSU's campus, it should recognize your institutional authentication and link straight to databases subscribed to by FSU. You can also use a Gmail account or set up an account uh, in order to create Google alerts for up-to-date news on your research topic, which is a good practice to get in the habit of as a future lawyer. Don't rely just on Google, though. Uh, it's possible that the search engine doesn't find something that's on a database, and you have access to hundreds of legal and interdisciplinary databases um, on the homepage of the FSU Law Research Center's website. Uh, there are 119 legal databases uh, that you have special access to as a law student and 744 interdisciplinary databases. On the interdisciplinary page, you can browse by subject to find relevant resources, many of which will let you use advanced terms and connector searching to mas maximize your results. Something that's especially important to do if you plan on revising a class paper to submit as a note or some other publication is to make sure that your same topic and thesis aren't preempted by forthcoming scholarship, that is, articles that have been accepted to be published already by a journal but haven't yet come out. In the handout for this workshop, I provided links to several other online repositories that collect preprints and forthcoming publications, but one of the biggest repositories, SSRN, contains a collection called the Legal Scholarship Network that you should definitely check out. Uh, but to keep things inter- and multidisciplinary, use the advanced search on the whole platform to include all of SSRN's networks and categories. This will filter through millions of abstracts and full text papers. So although this has been a pretty quick overview of many different sources, remember that researching is a continually evolving process. It's not likely that the exact topic and thesis uh, you've been you know, working on will make it into your paper without any revisions or alterations. So please remember that your team of librarians are available through the student ref email at the reference desk and through the Ask a Librarian and Book a Librarian forms on the website. We strongly encourage you to use Book a Librarian, for example, if you need help at any point in the researching and writing process. Mm -hmm. So thanks for watching and happy researching.